everybody, welcome back. Thanks for joining us today. So I got something really cool to talk about. It's probably one of the most overlooked things that we do when we build our systems, usually because we're in a hurry and we want it to work. But we are gonna do something that's really important, which is we're gonna ground our new inverter charger. Um, I should have done it. It's like step four of the install process. However, I had to wait on six gauge green cable because I want it to be the right color. <laughs> um, and anyway, so I'm coming to you today from inside our house because it's air conditioned really nice in here. Um, I'm working in the kitchen. Kitchen is not a workbench. I knew that was coming. So anyway, um, I'm going to walk you guys through actually making the cable, which is super simple. I'm using quality products like six gauge solid copper cable. I'm using a solid copper terminal lug that is um, an SC 10-6. And I'm using a small piece of um, heat shrink to make sure you seal it. You only have to put that on one end for my system because my system has a grounding bar, which you just then strip off the other end of the cable and slide it into a slot and you tighten the screw down and then that's connected to the chassis ground. So anyways, I'm gonna take you through the steps. I'm gonna show you where it's at in the manual that comes, the digital manual that comes with your inverter charger. So join me for this. I think you guys will enjoy it. All right guys, so here it is. This is the new uh, Rego high frequency inverter charger, 12 volt, 3000 watt, all right? So um, I know there have been some questions this is obviously my working copy that I've been making um, corrections to for Renogy so they can get out a final product. So you'll see the red marks and stuff that I've been putting in here. Anyway, um, so when you go through like step number four of this entire process, step one, two, three, and then there's four. Step four of the install process before you do anything else is actually to ground the inverter. So many people skip this step. I know they do. I've seen videos of it. I've seen pictures of people's systems that are crazy big and they don't ground out their components. So I can tell you for sure that I have been guilty of that in the past because you get so excited about getting it hooked up and getting it fired and you know, like getting everything set up and then you forget about doing it later on or you just, just choose not to do it. So um, the grounding portion for this actually requires you to use a six gauge wire and it says use an M4 uh, terminal lug. So I don't like those ones that are plastic. I like to actually make my own cables. So this is what I showed you a second ago. This is the SC10-6. Um, I've already went out and tested it on the inverter to make sure it's gonna fit properly. This is our little tube of heat shrink that I'll use to seal that on the end once I get it crimped. And then for the cabling, we used, here we go. Let's see if I can find the letters on this. Um, this is six gauge solid copper, 600 volt wire, okay? Look, here's the deal. I highly recommend six or uh, solid copper wire. Make sure you get some quality wire. This was, I believe, uh, around $16 for 10 feet of it. I, I, I could be wrong. It could have been a lot less than that. I'm not 100% sure. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll put a link in the description um, that'll take you directly to this this wire or this cable in, the, in our Amazon store, uh, which I'd appreciate if you use that link to purchase it if you do. Um, this is incredible cable. Um, I really like it a lot. I've used it in other applications. It's good stuff. Again, solid copper, not copper clad. I don't know if I can get to, you can kind of see, okay? So copper clad is where they take aluminum braided wire on the inside, and then it's actually coated in copper versus being solid copper. And there's a significant difference. One, solid copper is much more flexible and easy to, to run in your lines, and um, it's better for um, long-term use, okay? So anyway, that's what we got guys. Um, I'll do a quick scan through just a few other things that talks about 
in the new inverter charger manual. Um, like I said, I've gone through it several times. There's some red markups in here, you'll see. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, now I'm gonna make this cable for you so you guys can watch, and then, then we'll get out and install it on the, uh, on the new component. All right, guys, uh, so first thing we're gonna do is I wanna make sure we lay out everything. I'm gonna tell you what everything is. This is a standard heat gun. You can buy them all over the place. I'll make sure I put a link to this one below. It's pretty decent. It comes with lots of attachments. Set of uh, crimpers. You don't need to have fancy ones. This is a good cheap set right here. A nice set of wire strippers. I use the Klein strippers. I'm not sponsored, but these are a good tool. And then make sure you have everything we just talked about and your cable. All right, so the first thing I do is I'm gonna start by one, measuring out exactly how much I need to trim off. And then, so this cable's pretty big. I don't actually have the correct wire stripper. So what I do is I gently go around with these strippers and the cutting surfaces, and I just gently squeeze it until it's just cutting the, um, the cable casing off, and then I just pull. See? Real super quick. Then what I do is I want to as tightly wind as I can the copper uh, cable on the inside. Put that around like so. I've got one little strand hanging out. That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> um, and I take my crimpers. And here you go. I go from uh, the top down. I never go from the sides. Just top down. Crimp it on there. And you want to make sure that this is really crimped good and tight, guys. All right. So now you got your crimp on. What I do next is I take it, I make sure all these, this little wire that got pushed out, I just wrap that around. I'm gonna take my heat shrink. On my heat shrink, I make sure I put it all the way to just about where the bend is in your cable lug. And then we're just gonna use the heat gun. All right, make sure you don't, when you lay it back down, you don't touch that. This is really hot. And also, uh, your heat shrink is really hot right now. So I would just lay that right there and let it cool off. All right, so meet me in the camper. Welcome back, guys. We are outside in the Airstream on the side yard um, and getting ready to install our ground wire on our new inverter charger. Um, real quick, though, I was going to take you through what tools I need in here. And I was going to show you where it hooks up to on the inverter and where it's going to be actually grounded to for the chassis ground. Airstream, in its infinite wisdom, back in 2001, when this uh, trailer was made, installed a, tr a chassis grounding bar that has multiple spots for you to be able to install um, additional grounding wires. So let's get to that. I'll walk you through what tools I'm going to use and where we're going to put it. All right, guys, so this is all you need to install this. Um, I've got a, the same set of wire strippers, a flat tip screwdriver for the old school grounding bar, the ground wire that we just made inside, and my 12 volt DeWalt tool with a cross tip bit. All right, that is really everything that you need. So let's get to installing this thing. All right, guys, so right down in there in between where the, the two um, AC connections run into the inverter charger, right in between them is the ground mount screw. So we're going to mount that cable there. It's going to run all the way back, and then right back there, right about there, 
Let's see if I can't get it. Right there is the ground mount block. And now that runs a hard ground out to the trailer chassis uh, on the front A-frame part of the tongue. So anyway, that'll be a great ground for this. Um, let's go ahead and get started. Roughly run it to right about there. We're gonna cut it. Take about a half inch maybe, just like we did before. Just kind of work it around. All right. So, you can rip out. Careful in case you get some wires poked in your finger. Right. Give her a good twist. And then, I'm going to go ahead and feed her back through here. Like I said, I've already got that one designated. Make sure you don't have any frays out there. And there we go. Give it a good tug, make sure it's not gonna pop out. And at this point, guys, our inverter charger has a really nice, good, solid ground. All right, guys, so our inverter charger is grounded. I think we're gonna be good to go. This has been a solid system so far. I've got more videos coming. Talk about how it's how the split phase 240 volt works, how I'm using it, and how it could benefit you guys. Remember, if you like this video today, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment below and share this video. Um, I really appreciate you guys, and we'll see you guys next time. Man, I gotta get out of here. This freaking camper is hot. Welcome to Florida.